I would now like to welcome our guest speaker, Carl Jenkins, to the stage. He is a very busy man. He has a black belt in ninjutsu. <laughs> he has just completed his MSc in BCB, which is a very long word if I spell it out for you. <laughs> and Carl Jenkins teaches at um, Mount View High School. He teaches mathematics, geography, and life sciences. Give a round of applause for Carl Jenkins. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, it's very nice to be here. Uh, my name is Carl Jenkins. Um, as, you, as you said, I'm an author, a writer, a teacher, you know, martial arts enthusiast. I like to say that because it took me a long time to get my blank out. Um, you know, I just like saying it. Um, <laughs> let me just jump into it. Um, I began writing in 2013. So 2013, I was doing my matric. Um, I was waiting for my results. And in that time, I had this idea for a for a book, it's about anthropomorphic animals. So in other words, animals with human qualities. So these animals can use swords, you know, um, they fight the wars and all those things. It was the idea that I had, and it was over and over and over, just kept going on and on in my head. And I decided the best way to get it out is just to write it down. So I began writing the book, um, and it took me a month. And I was very surprised, you know, this accident, you know, this came easy to me. Um, and I found that I really enjoyed writing. Uh, so it took me a month, and immediately I thought, ooh, this is gonna be a bestseller. I'm gonna be, you know, so rich from this. Um, I self-edited it, sent it through to like 22, 23 plus publishers, um, and all of them rejected me. All of them said no. Um, you know, I was a bit heartbroken, but, you know, it happens. In 2014, 2015, I wrote another book, um, this book was called The Rite of Passage, um, The Story of Kai. Uh, so I wrote that book, again I sent it through to another 22, 23 plus publishers, again they all rejected me. Uh, one thing that they told me was, um, it's very amateurish to use your own name in the book. You know, because in my mind it was, uh, I'm going to get my name out there somewhere or another. Uh, <laughs> it did not turn out well. Um, then I wrote another book, this is the book that's over there, that's, um, that book is called Why My Past Won't Leave Me Alone. It is not about me. It is a book about, uh, a Christian fiction novel about this guy who keeps getting back, of, um, he gets uh, those um, flashbacks of a traumatic event that happened to him. And then he has to go through uh, church to figure out, you know, to get some healing in his soul. And uh, through the whole story, it took me about six months to write that book because that book is not part of my genre. Uh, one thing that I always say when I'm writing is, if you are writing something that is truly you, that's authentic to you, it will be very easy to write. Um, my quickest book that I wrote, I'll talk about that later, but that book took me 10 days to write <laughs> because I really enjoyed writing it. Um, so then, finally, in 2019, I had another book, uh, this is now The Turlock Triangle, which is that book over there. Um, that book was my debut book, the first book that I published. So, what happened was, I wrote the book out, as I did usually, it was about 44,000 words. And then I thought that was halfway through, and I thought, oh no, there's something very wrong here. And I watched a video on somebody speaking on the power of planning, you know, the importance of planning. And I realized this we have been wrong all with all these other books I haven't been planning or structuring out my um, scenes. So I deleted everything um, and I spent the next month just planning out the book. What happens in this scene? What happens in this chapter? How many scenes per chapter? Um, how many characters do I want? Um, if there's challenges, what's the challenges? What's the main theme of the book? Is there a romance between who? Uh, is it a slow build? Is it a clean romance? All of those things I planned it out, I fleshed it out beautifully, and then I began writing it. It came to about 88,000 words, and when I finally sent it through to the publishers, that was the book that was accepted. And I remember um, when I got the email, the acceptance email, you know, I, went, you know, I went to the kitchen where my family was. It was a Sunday, I remember. Um, I went and I told him, and my sister was like, ah, we're rich, we're rich. <laughs> we're not rich yet. Um, that was like, that was now 2019. 
in 2020, the book finally came out and I was so uh, proud of myself. And I am still very proud of the book because there's a lot of um, good reviews that come in. Because it's clean romance. Um, I like romance. Uh, but, but it's a fantasy book, but there's a lot of romance in it. Um, the triangle means, um, you know, a love triangle. So they, these are two cousins um, who goes on a um, tournament, so it's a cross-country tournament where they have to complete nine challenges in nine months for in nine provinces. And on their way they meet this girl um, who's on the run from a syndicate. So they decide they're going to help her out, but you know, then they start falling for her and you know, there's a whole little love triangle there. Um, I thought it was very sexy the way I wrote it. <laughs> um, but yeah. So that book I am very proud of. Um, and then in 2020, I published three more books. So then I published um, that book, finally, I published it as an e-book. So um, you can see that book cover is not as like the others. That one I published for Zero Rand e-book on Amazon. Um, I published is Blood Poetry. Um, that book is also a fantasy book that's dystopian. It's dystopian, so in other words, it is um, a dark fantasy where they're living in a, um, a world that is, you know, not perfect. There's a lot of war and anguish. Um, and there's some poetry in there because um, the main character, he can't express his feelings. So instead, what he does is he writes poetry in a literary book, which is there. There's a lot of blood, you know, fighting, killing. Um, yeah, I like, you know, fighting stuff, swords, a lot of swords. Um, so, the Blood Poetry was published, and then my last book that I published was um, this book, The Growth, that was in 2020, it's over there. The Growth, Growth stands for um, the greatest loser of all time. Um, this book is the one that took me 10 days to write. Um, this book I really, really, I think this was my, my most fun book that I enjoyed writing. Because um, I was sit, I remember I was in the kitchen. It was a Thursday night. It's Thursday because that's my night in the kitchen. Um, <laughs> and I was uh, listening to a documentary about this about this hidden dinosaur in the um, Congo. Remember, I'm a, a biologist, right? So I like uh, watching documentaries like this. And there's a hidden dinosaur in the Congo called Mokale and Bembe. So I thought, Ooh, I would love to go to the Congo and you know just search for this thing. Um, and I went online to you know check out how much it cost. It was about ten thousand dollars, and I thought, oh, that's out of my budget. <laughs> um, so I decided instead of writing, I'm going there. Let me write a book about somebody who goes there, and then just for fun, let me make him a loser. You know. Um, so I wrote this. Uh, so I designed the character to be a loser. In other words, he has all the potential, but he doesn't use it. To me, that's a loser. You somebody who has all this potential, but they just wasted doing nonsense. Um, so he goes uh, and he joins a team and he, he puts himself out there. He does a lot of risky things because he wants glory. So in other words, he will go big fights for glory, but he puts everybody else at risk. That's the, what the, the story is, and he goes out there. That book took me, the, uh, the whole scene fleshed out in my head in one day. Um, ten days it took me to write, and I edited it in two days. Sent it through, and this book um, really means a lot to me because uh, this book actually made top five in the author elite awards. So I didn't manage to win, but I was one of the finalists, which I'm really proud of. Um, and you know, I just love this book. I think if this book ever became a movie, um, because you know, there's a lot of um, there's two different languages in there because I had to add in some um, is it Congolese. I had some Congolese in there um, because when they speak to the, the pygmies in the swamps, they speak Congolese, so I have different languages in there, um, different cultures, and then, like for example, he loves listening to music, so he brought with him a boombox and he's playing Jaikal music, you know, in the, in the forest, you know, he's dancing and all of that. Um, so uh, that's one of the stories that I love. And then in 2021, uh, in 2021, I don't know what uh, took over me, uh, but I decided I want to write and publish uh, 10 books for 2021. That was my goal. Um, I didn't manage to get 10 books. I got to 9 books. So um, in 2021, I managed to write and publish 9 books. 
Um, that's the CD that you can see on the side here, or it's this one. Um, that's a box set now that I got it out, out there. Um, so I wrote and I published the nine books and the series is a fantasy series. Now one thing that I struggled with is because in the series they have um, supernatural gifts. In other words, some can control fire, some can control water, uh, some can speak to animals. But I'm a born again Christian and one thing that I struggled with is, um, does this go against my faith? So it was a big struggle for me to figure out, uh, can I hide this or is it just gonna, you know. Um, and I found this group online um, called um, Real Makers Consortium. So this is a group of Christian fantasy authors. And I asked them, and they gave me some references, um, for example, J.R.O. Tolkien, um, C.S. Lewis. These are all Christian fantasy authors. And one thing that they taught me is, if you are going to write fantasy as a Christian, um, and there's powers and things, you need to make a clear distinction between light and dark. What is good is good, what is wrong is wrong. That's what I, what I had to learn. Um, for example, so in this book, the main character, when he uses his gift for evil purposes, then there's always, a, um, there's always some sort of backlash against him to show this is not what you're supposed to be doing with your, with your gift. Um, so that's the thing that I wrote out in the game. The main thing that I learned about that was structuring and planning. So I structured out the whole, all seven books of the novel, um, of the series. Um, and there's a short story also with it. I structured out all seven out and I made sure I know what happens in book one, book two, book three, book two, all to book seven. And then in maybe in book three, I'll put something that uh, will link to book seven um, as a sort of a foreshadowing of what's going to happen. Or so when somebody reads book seven, oh, that's what it was for in book, you know, three, you understand? Um, so I had to learn how to link books and that all comes in the planning phase. Um, so I planned out all seven books out before I actually even wrote them. And I wrote them, each book uh, took me about a month to write. Um, those books are each about 60,000 words each. Um, because I write at night. Um, I was telling her when I uh, in high school, uh, when I was studying for matric, I used to study at night, so between 11 o'clock to 3 a.m., that's when I used to study. Um, and that became my habit, so now I can't sleep during that time. So instead of sleeping now, what I do is I write during that time, um, because the house was quiet. We are about seven children in our house, six children in our house, uh, seven people in total. Um, and so now, you know, it's very loud during the day. So at night, when it's quiet, that's when I'm awake, that's when I'm writing my books. Um, so it's a very uh, personal time for me. Because the first hour, you know, maybe you'll struggle, but from that second hour, uh, just everything just flows and it becomes so much easier to write. And I really enjoy that time because that's my... And you know, sometimes if you're writing, um, the people who did the poetry is so beautiful. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure you can uh, attest this when you're writing and you're really into what you're writing. You get so emotional because it's like, ooh, now let's say you're writing a, a, a piece of romance. Ooh, this feels so sexy to you. Just, you know, imagine if you're writing a dramatic piece, suddenly you feel a tear there in your eye. Um, I cried while writing my own stories. Um, I don't want to admit it, but that, that's happened. Um, because, and it's like things that I've, I've never experienced these scenes before, um, but I'm picturing myself in that character and what the character is experiencing. And you know, um, like there's a breakup scene, you know. You know, <laughs> yes. Um, but yeah, so when you're writing, you should just be able to experience, you have to put yourself in that mindset of what you're actually writing, uh, see yourself as that character and enjoy it. Now, uh, Mapola asked me to speak on how does creative writing help your academics? Because um, I am now finishing my master's degree. I think I added it in about 11 weeks. Oh, it takes a so long to get, uh, you know, certified, it's great. But yeah, so I ended it in, I'm waiting for it. Um, but one thing that I did learn about in, in, in this time of writing and doing my um, thesis is that when you learn, when you write regularly creative writing, uh, you do have your own voice. I started learning, oh, actually I do write like this. For example, the, the poets who spoke now, you heard all the, um, the pacing that they used. Um, the amount of metaphors and similes that they use. I can't do that. I can't do that. that that's something that I admire in them, but I can't do that. 
Um, I don't like using too much uh, similes and metaphors in my writing because that doesn't feel authentic to me. So if you do something, you need to make sure it's authentic to you because um, when you write something that is authentic to you, it comes so much easier. I've never once had a writer's block because I write what's only what, only what I want to write. If I, so when you write, I write what I want to reread, and then when you edit, you edit for what other people read. So let's say um, I have a book, like for example that one, uh, The Growth, that's something that I want to do. I want to go to the Congo. I want to see all these adventures, so I write stories about that. And then when I edit, now I edit because other people must read it. You understand? So when you write, you just write, it will flow from you, and then from that you edit it now to the public. Um, I like um, clean romance, so I wrote a book about clean romance, and then when I edit it, I edit it for the public. You know, you understand what I'm saying? You find something in you, and you have to start um, developing interest, because if you develop interest, I say, interest is something that makes you interesting. So the more interest you have, you put that into your writing. And then from there, that will flow over to your uh, academics. Um, in my honors thesis, um, the mini thesis that I wrote, I did not get a lot of um, data from the lab. Uh, it was, ooh, the lab was a big failure. Um, and, you know, I had to put that in my thesis that the lab, you know, was a failure, the lab work was a failure. Um, and I passed my thesis, but the comment that came back with it was, he didn't have much data, but he explained it well. That's how I passed my thesis. Um, because I know how to, you know, you know, spin a story. So if you can spin a story from your own uh, individuality, it will be so much easier for you. That's one of the things that I learned. The second thing that I learned was uh, the importance of planning and structuring. This is something that I find to be very important because in the beginning I didn't find it important but if you write poetry, if you write novels, short stories, even if you make memes, structure is important. Right? Structure is important, uh, planning is important, you need to know what is going to be in your, um, in your, if you're doing a, a thesis, what comes in your aims, what comes in your, um, in your introduction, in your results section, what kind of graphs are you going to use, what kind of software are you going to use, all of those things that you have to plan out before the time so that you know how much time to allocate for that. Um, the nine books that I wrote uh, in 2021, I could not have done if I didn't plan it out perfectly. Um, so, planning is a very important part, especially for academic writing, uh, because academic writing is a lot more scrutiny. You know, if people don't like my book, most of the time they're not going to write about how much they don't like my book. Right? But when you academic writing is going to be, they're going to be very nitpicky. They don't really, you know, if they see a typo there, they also maybe say, oh, there's a typo and read on. But with academic writing, there is no, if they see that typo, they will, you know, pin you on that small thing. So you need to make sure you plan out properly, your editing is properly, um, your structure is as you want it. In the life science department, um, life science faculty, there is now different departments, and each department uses a different style of referencing. So if you use the wrong referencing, they pick on that. So you need to plan it out. Um, your structuring, uh, your result section, is your graphs going to be in the thing or is it going to be in a separate addendum? All of those things that they have, it's all an important of your planning that you need to do your structuring. So structuring, planning is a very important part of it. And then the third part is, as my caller said, the muscle that you build, the mental muscle and the physical muscle. Uh, the writing of the thesis was the easiest part for me um, because you know writing comes so quickly to me. I just you know a lot of times I don't even look. I just you know because I've already practiced how to write quickly and how to write often. So those things come very easy to me because I I have developed the muscle for writing already. Um, the book where I hardly ever struggle when I'm writing. You know, sometimes when you speak, when I'm speaking, I may struggle to find the word, but when I'm writing, that words come just like that because I've developed that muscle of getting words quickly when you write. You don't even need to look at the keyboard anymore because now this becomes, it becomes so much a part of you that it's easy to get out. So you develop that muscle already, mentally and physically. 
Um, the lab work maybe took some time, uh, the field work took some time, doing the research took time, but the writing became so easy for me. If my, uh, if my supervisor sends me uh, comments to change, I will get it to you, by tomorrow you will have the thing back because it takes so easy for me. Because I write regularly. So your creative writing is basically practice for when you're not going to your academics. Um, the school that I teach at, they always ask me to write up the letters because I can do it quickly, 10 minutes, and a very professional, beautiful letter that I can write up for them. Um, but my uh, ninjutsu, my sensei always asks me to write up stuff for him. I do it very quickly because this is what I have to do. And now I'm taking a course on uh, e-book marketing, right? So um, I'm taking a course on e-book marketing because most of my sales come actually from America. Um, because one thing that I've learned was, uh, so Africans don't enjoy eating that much. <laughs> it's, just a, it's a very sad thing. Um, they don't enjoy reading that much, or if they do like to read, they don't like to pay for the book. You know, I have a lot of people who ask me, can they read my book, but they want it for free. You know, and the first thing is, you know, it costs money. Um, by the way, if you want to buy a book, you can buy a book. <laughs> I have a card machine. Um, so, yes. So, um, I sell mostly to Americans, but now um, one thing that I have to learn now is to how to uh, sell properly to them. And most of them, they read e-books, so they read it on their phones or on a Kindle. So I'm now taking that, and one of those things that I have to learn is how do you write emails to sell? Because writing emails is easy, but now there's a structure again that you have to follow. Um, there's, you have to plan out your emails. These things I didn't know. I just thought you send out a proper email, you know, it sounds nice, you know, buy my book. It doesn't work like that, you have to structure out your emails, you have to plan them three weeks in advance just to sell one book. That's, you know, it's a very um, in-depth thing that you have to learn, but you can see how much planning and structuring is important in all of that. So, um, this has been a journey for me, the writing uh, of my books. Um, and I feel I'm going to go a lot further. I am not rich yet. Uh, my sister is very sad about that. Um, I'm not very rich yet, but I'm, I feel very blessed because I've had a lot of opportunities. Uh, my books are now in exclusive books, um, the words with books, a few other bookstores uh, in Gauteng, across South Africa. Um, I've been on TV uh, three, four times. Um, I've spoken at the um, Adam Small Literary Festival in uh, Pignan, France. Um, I'm in connection with uh, Diana Ferris. I don't know if you guys know her. Diana Ferris? Um, yeah. She's a very prominent uh, Afrikaans poet, but she writes English poetry also. Uh, beautiful lady. Um, so she helped me actually with my very first uh, book launch. Um, so I feel blessed because of all these people I've been connected with, um, all these opportunities I've had. Um, I've been in um, newspapers, news articles. Um, so I feel blessed because of this writing journey. I'm not yet rich, I'm not yet a bestseller, but I believe one day I'm going to get there. Um, I've hosted uh, writing workshops because I have a lot of people coming to me saying, um, I have a book, but I don't know what to do now with it. Um, or I want to write this book, but I don't know where to start. So I've hosted uh, writing workshops before, um, and it's something that I feel I'm very passionate about. I'm enjoying it. So um, that's my story. Is there anybody with questions? Yes, me. <laughs> Do you have a wife? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm single. <laughs> so that's why. Let's see if the time. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, time management is very important to me. Um, yeah, I don't do a lot of uh, you know, dating and stuff. Um, but uh, I spend a lot of time with my family, and my church. Uh, you know, I'm actually busy in almost every single day of the week, except on Wednesdays. <laughs> yeah, I believe so, that's why I write romance. <laughs> Anybody else? Um, some of them I self-edited, some of them had an editor, for example, The Dark Triangle. Uh, those two books, they are the same book. Um, that was the first book that was a, now to a proper traditional publisher, so there was an editor. 
Um, but the internet is a very small, um, the Soviet publisher is a very small publisher, um, and they don't have a big budget, so um, they, you know, they got a very cheap cover made. <laughs> so to, this year I changed it to that cover, um, and I had to pay for it myself. The cover is expensive. <laughs> it took me that was ten thousand rand. Yeah. Um, one thing that I do have to tell you is um, I did traditionally publish and self-publish. Um, and ever since I started publishing in 2020, I've spent over 80,000 Rand and I've made back about 17,000 Rand. Um, so I'm at a deficit. I'm not in debt because I know how to budget, um, but I'm at a deficit. Um, but yeah, so that book and the globe, those ones were professionally um, edited. So that one, I had to pay it for the editor there. That one cost editors are expensive. That was like 9,000 Rand um, to edit that book. And that book is only about 50,000 words. Um, the publisher has their own editor, so they edited that, at the Turlock Triangle. Uh, these ones, the series, um, that I um, edited, self-edited, then I sent it to a few amateur editors that, I, that I'm friends with, who did it for free. Um, I still found a few titles, but they don't But I think it came out very well. Um, I'm with a distributor now, so they also choose to um, make sure. And this, these people have a 100% success rate, so they're very picky about which books they choose, and they accepted my book, so you know, the editing is, is good enough for them. No other questions? Just one more question. Do you think writing is something someone is born with, or they learn it? Um, I would say uh, it's both. Um, but primarily, if you are born with it, I think I'm born with it, um, it, will become, it will become so much easier to you. Um, there's a concept that we have in uh, Christianity called a grace for something. Um, I believe you have, if you have a grace for writing, it will be, it's, it's a gift that God gave you, and it's something that will come so much easier to you when you do it. Um, for example, I've tried making my own covers before. Because I have these ideas for covers, but I can't do it. I don't have the, the grace for that cover design graphic, you know. Um, but when I do a writing, and it can be writing anything, writing a thesis, writing a letter, writing an email, writing books, short stories, it just flows naturally. It's so easy to me because it's a gift that I have. Um, and now your education, is one thing that I always say to the children at school, your education is something that's supposed to polish the gift that God gave you. So if you feel you are a poet, you, everything that you do now needs to be studying how to make that poetry better. Um, your friendships, how, do you, how does your friendships help your poetry? Your life story, how does your life help your poetry? Um, how does the, the TV shows you're watching help your poetry? All of those things. So um, it is something that I think you're bored with, but it is also something that you can learn. And if not, you know, I hear a ghostwriter. <laughs> is that everybody? Thank you. Thank you so much, Kyle. That was really wonderful hearing from you. Such a well-written, published author with 13 novels behind their name. Kyle will stick around for you to interact with him later on. He has brought his novels along if you would like to purchase them as well. So you can get some first-hand experience from a writer.